Hello, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another grain to glass video. And we've got the pineapple or the pine of Weizen, which is a pineapple wheat beer. Um, totally inspired by uh, Rate My Beer and Hackney Church when they did their Lagadoo. I like that beer. I didn't think I was going to like a beer with pineapple in, especially a wheat beer of Eisenbach, and I really enjoyed it. And I thought, oh, I'll have a crack at doing my own version. And that's what this is. So, Here's the brew day, we'll come back and we'll crack this bottle open. Hello, welcome back to the channel and as you can see, I'm doing a pineapple Weizenbock. So it's, uh, it's going to be a step mash this one, it's brewing the bag as it always is and the grains, we've got 32% wheat malt, we've got 21% Pilsner, 14% Munich, 6% torrified wheat and 4% flaked wheat. Now, I've just crushed this, so that's all ready to go. And then the hops, we've got Halital Mittelfruit and Tetnang. What I'm gonna do, well, there's my salts. What I'm gonna do about the yeast, I'm gonna do a mixed yeast on this one. I'm gonna put four grams of this banana split in and two grams of the Gretel in two new yeast to me, so hopefully I can harvest some uh, yeast off this brew. Uh, got me a kit there, and this one's going to be fermented in one of my plastic buckets because it's got to have the pineapple. Now I'll show you now the uh, pineapple stuff. I'm about a week before brew day, but what I've got to do is prep the pineapple. Gonna skin it, chop it up put it in freezer bags and freeze it and then use it in the secondary fermentation. Hopefully the freezing process helps break down all the cells uh, and just gives off more of the juice and the flavours in the secondary. So yep this is way before brew day but just so you know how I'm going to do that. Right so that ended up with 2.3 kilos pineapple chopped up, chunked gonna go in the freezer and because of that amount I'm going to be fermenting this in one of my plastic buckets but don't don't fancy getting that out of my pressure fermenter or one of my glass carboy demijohns so yeah put that in the freezer until I'm ready to brew now so there you go so that pineapple is in the freezer it's gonna go into secondary and yeah it's gonna be a step mash which I've done before well, it's been a while, but I've got to do the following. Like this. So there's my notebook. So that's the schedule for the mash. So it's a bit different for a video. So yeah, so everything's ready, crushed. Just waiting for the water to get up. So a good strike temp, about 35, well, about 37. So yeah, everything's there. I'll crack on. So we're up to the first temp which is 35 Celsius. This is basically called the acid rest. I will put on the screen what this actually means and why we're doing it. Basically, it's traditionally done in Germany. Um, it was to get better, better results from the grains and to get some flavors as well, but we don't need to do it. I'm just doing it because it's traditional to do so. So I thought it'd be a bit of fun to do it. Um, also, I mentioned the percentage in the grains what I didn't mention was that also includes the pineapple makes up for about 23% of the fermentables. So if you wasn't going to put the pineapple in, the wheat malt is actually 55% of this grain bill. Hope that makes sense. So yeah, it's not just 32% of the wheat malt, it's 55%. You've got to have more wheat in it. And then you've obviously got the terrified wheat and you've got the flake wheat. So it's quite a big wheat addition in this so I did forget to mention that 23% of fermentables is going to be fresh pineapple um, and the inspiration for this brew came from Hackney Church and Rate My Beer they did a pineapple Weizenbock which I actually had and I enjoyed so I thought I wouldn't mind having a go trying to do something very similar so that's what this beer is all about um, so yeah so this is the first one this is the acid rest got to do this five minute stand very 
thick in there in that bottom got all the water in sprue the bag just need to throw in my salts as well there you go so that's the Tariche a Munich style water profile so let's give us another stir so yeah so it's, you don't have to do this I'm just doing it because it's a traditional method and uh, I want to try and get some of them flavours that you get traditionally from a wheat malt as well so I'm going to leave it now to stand for five minutes okay so we're at the next step now which is 52 celsius this is going to be a 15 minute steep and this is the protein rest so yeah let's just give it a good stir let it sit for 15 minutes at this temp and we'll move on to the next temp lots of little steps and just to confirm again it's around about overall wheat content in this 55% that's including the tarified wheat and the flake wheat and obviously the malted wheat so yeah 55% good total fermentable wheat so got my pH sample as you can see it's really milky at this stage looks like a turbid mash that you get in a spontaneous brew so yeah I'm going to check the pH on that if you're wondering how I'm basically going from one step to the other without the uh, the grains and the bag scorching on the bottom of the pan I'm using these little clips so I'll clip the bag to the side of the pan so the grains are still in the water in the liquor as we should call it now um, but the bag is not touching the bottom so them grains are going to slowly warm up between each step as well so it just keeps that bag off the bottom of the pan okay step three so this is the sacrification first sacrification rest so this is at 63 celsius and this is going to be a 45 minute steep so yeah there we go okay so next step so this is a sacrification number two this is going to be 72 celsius for a 30 minute steep so yeah just one more left after this which will be the mash out so yeah 72 30 minutes okay so we've reached the final step now so 10 minutes 78 this is the mash out so I'll just put a quick explanation up on the screen about the mash out. I've done that before in a couple of my other videos. But yeah, this is the last one, then I can start to move on to a boil. Okay, so that's the uh, the mash out done. So it's time to drain the bag now. All that worked, get it out, and then get a boil going. So there we go reached a boil got a lot of protein in here so I'm just gonna stir a little bit of that in and then it's gonna be a 60 minute boil first edition of hops at 60 minute the bittering one well it's basically both hop editions is gonna be bittering it's not gonna be a really bitter beer we'll just need to balance it a bit so we've got Halatal Mitterfrau going in at the 60 minute so I'm gonna put that in now and then we've got Tetnang going in at the 45 minute mark. So let's get these in. Okay, so we've got Tetnang, 45 minute edition going in. So that's it for the additions. Um, it's going to be at the end of boil now and then into the cooling pan. So yeah it, the, the mashing is a long process um, but the boil is only two additions so we'll just get this boiled 45 more minutes and then into the cooling pan okay 60 minute boil done gotta get this in the cooling pan get it cooled down get it in the fermenting bucket and pitch some yeast so let's crack on I 
a lot of protein left in the pan. There's probably about one and a half litres in there, and the majority of it is protein from that process and that wheat malt. So, yeah, crack on. Okay, so the final bit is to pitch. I'm using six grams of uh, the yeast. I've done it a four gram and a two gram split. Doing a dry, not gonna hydrate it. Now I'm gonna put this about 22 degrees for approximately two weeks. And then halfway through, I'll be adding that pineapple. Okay, so that's it, put in the fermentation fridge. 22 degrees, like I say, two weeks. Well, less than that because I need to put that pineapple in. But yep, brew day, done. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. So, I did add 2.3 kilos of fresh pineapple. Uh, what I did, uh, it fermented, I started, well, the brew day was on the 6th of June. And on the, let me see here. The 18th of June, I transferred the wort into another fermenter and basically transferred it on top of 2.3 kilograms of the pineapple, which had been frozen, let it defrost, put it in the fermenter, beer straight on top, and then left that. So that was on the 18th of June, and I left that basically until the 7th of August. Yep, 24. So that's how long the beer was sat on the pineapple to get as much out of the pineapple as possible to get as much fermented sugars fermented with that yeast. Um, it turned out 8.4% which I'm happy with, really happy with that. Really, really quite dry. Fermented really, really far down and then it was that awkward situation where you're trying to calculate the fruit addition with the beer. Just gets really confusing. And that took ages on the internet to do that. Um, so yeah, we've gone through what, well you've seen the video, what's been added. So really it was just that pineapple bit that was the extra after the video. Um, and it's just a long time. So the brew day, like I said, was a six, all the way up until the set, well two months, two months, eight weeks basically, or maybe just a bit over uh, to get this beer into the bottle. So then bottle conditioned it with uh, oh, sugar, 64 grams of sugar for eight point three litres of beer uh, that got me six 330 mils and 13 500 mils and there's not many left because I've been, been enjoying them um, so I thought it's about time I put it on the video so let's get it cracked open um, it's basically a wheat beer the yeast I did split with, between two different yeasts I wanted to get some one was like showcased for I think it was Gretel was showcased having good clove flavours and the other one banana obviously to get some of them banana flavours so they're both uh, wheat beer German uh, yeast and uh, they worked really really well so yeah so let's get it cracked open you always I always get nervous cracking a flip top bottle you just don't know you just don't know let's have a let's have a listen Ah, nothing. That was disappointing, wasn't it? That was really disappointing. So this has been in the fridge for a while as well. See if I can get that pour on there. You can see it's quite clear. But what I'm going to do, I want that yeastiness in there. So then, finish it off. There we go. So... Knock that carbonation off the sides. This is the thing. You see it there? I've got bits. I've got chunks of pineapple. Even though I did it with me bottling one, i still got some pineapple chunks in my beer. So uh, if you've been sent one of these beers off me, I expect some ch pineapple chunks because obviously I don't filter my beer. It just comes as it is. So there you go. You can see the carbonation. Hopefully you can see the carbonation in there. So it is a wheat beer, so it's 
supposed to have some carbonation. It has got some carbonation. The head, I've had different bottles and different heads, to be honest with you. Some have had like a really good thick head. This one is one of them thin heads, which we've got, but I don't know why that is. Some are good, some are small, no idea. But the actual carbonation is there and happy with that. Looks good. Let's move that bulk, it's getting in my way. Aroma. You're getting the pineapple. It's right at the back. You've got to get through the banana and clove, to be honest with you. And right at the back. I keep doing this. I think it's about the third video. I've started to pour beer before I even drank it. That carbonation looks great. The big chunks of pineapple. Yeah, it's bready, wheaty. Definitely got that touch of pineapple right at the back. Even though I use 2.3 kilos of fresh pineapple, it's right at the back. I think the banana and clove come forward. There was no US hops or anything. It was hopped with traditional hops as well. So, let's go for it. Taste. Okay. Cheers. I'm getting the pineapple on the taste there. Getting a little bit of the booze. 8.4%. Like I was saying, it's quite dry because it fermented right out. So it didn't leave lots of body in the beer. It's fermented right out to get that 8.4%. But it's definitely a pineapple Weizenbock. That's what it is. Is it Agadu? No, it's not Agadu. This is its own beer, to be honest with you. I mean, I just wanted to do my own version. Um, didn't ask Hackney Church what their recipe was or anything like that. I just wanted to do a version to see what it'd be like, because I liked it. And for me, that's really drinkable. You can see how cold it is. The pineapple is leaving like this uh, acidic note. You can imagine the pineapple, like the acidity from pineapple. It's leaving that acidic note on your tongue, which I really like. It does feel like I'm, I've just had a, a chunk of pineapple. Probably did get a chunk of pineapple though, didn't I? You know. <laughs> But that, that is so clear, so I can feel it now. As I'm sat here, I can feel the warming in the stomach. I can feel that. But I'm pleased with that. I, I would brew this again, 100%. I wouldn't change anything either. I'd do the exact same process. Sit it on the fruit for a long time. You know, same malts, don't think I'd change. I'd even use the same yeast because I think it's just done a good job. It really, really has. I'm pleased with that. The head staying around, it just didn't pour a big, thick head. I've just burped pineapple. It's just crazy that. Yeah, I like that. Maybe I'd try to do one less boozy. But I'd definitely do it again. It's a brew I'd do again. And like I say, you've seen the brew day. It's all my own recipe. Didn't, uh, didn't know anything, like I say, from Hackney Church or Rate My Beer. But it is credit to them doing that beer that made me think, oh, I'd have a crack at that. And I've really enjoyed it. I mean, I'm, we're, we're coming out, we've come out of summer now. But for summer, that'd be lovely. It really, really was. And, yeah, I'm not going to compare it to Agadir because they're two totally different beers. They really, really are. You, People who've got them will know what I mean by that if you've tried both, but it's still a cracker. It's still a cracker in its own right, and it really, really is. And I'm gonna go and sit down and enjoy this now. So I don't think there's anything more I can say uh, about the brew day. It's all there. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's nothing more to say. PH was pH was a little bit high on brew day. I'd say that, even though uh, did add you know added the salts. Um, yeah, I mean that's all on brew day. You'll see all that. So yeah, that's my Pina Weizen, so pineapple Weizenbock. I think it's rather delicious, and I'll do it again. Okay, thanks for watching this grain to glass video. Any questions? As always, put it below. Happy to, you know chat through it any any suggestions about how i may filter it next time because i did go like i say i had my um bottling wand um and no my bottling wand auto siphon because this, this 
this fermented in the bucket, auto siphon, bottling wand on the end, and I still can't believe that through that bottling wand, we're still getting some little chunks of pineapple coming through, which is just, it's craft beer, isn't it, at the end of the day? It says it on the, it says it on the, gra the glass, not it's craft beer. It's lovely. Okay, cheers, thanks for watching. I think I've gone on enough, and I'll see you on another one.